This video is sponsored by AG1. Welcome to episode 12 of my 2023 training diaries. We're now back home here in Vancouver, Canada. But in the last episode, I was coming to you from Spain, where we were preparing to run the Pyrenees Staged Run, a seven day, 220 kilometer staged race with over 15,000 meters of elevation gain that Audrey and I would be racing as a team. And this was our final objective on our big European summer adventure before returning home here to Canada. In episode 11, I showed you footage from the two weeks that we spent in Slovenia, in the Julian Alps. And from there, we took a flight to Barcelona, where we'd spend six days exploring the city, eating tapas and doing some training. Audrey was tapering at this point, so she kept it mostly pretty short. While I was still training through, since the race, the Pyrenees staged run, would really just be a big week of training for me in preparation for the Moab 240. Barcelona is always quite warm this time of year, but there happened to also be a heat wave. So temperatures near the city reached the mid 40 degrees Celsius. So I got a bit of a jump start on my heat training. We took a trip to nearby Montserrat by train so that I could do a long run. Now this is not what I expected when I heard that there was a monastery up on a hill. There's banks, there's restaurants, the whole town up here. We unfortunately didn't have the views and I got chased off the summit by thunder showers. But it is a really cool network of trails, definitely somewhere I would go back to. From Barcelona, we took a train north to a town called Ribes de Freser in the Pyrenees where the race would be starting. We got there about five days early so that we could do a bit more work before the race and just to get settled in and to get a feel for the mountains. I did a couple of runs there, including an uphill tempo run. The town was pretty dead until just a day or two before the race when other runners finally started flooding in. So this stage race is very different than any other stage race that I've done because we have a drop bag that they're going to give us at the end of each stage. And so all we have to carry is basically our required kit in case of uh, bad weather and some nutrition and uh, minimum one liter of water. But then each day we're staying in a hotel, we can shower and change into a new race kit for the following day. And also we'll have some recovery tools and other luxury items available to us. Nutrition for running is a very personal thing and we need to experiment to see what works best for us as individuals. That's something I've talked about before. But our bodies still rely on the same nutrient foundation to power our health on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's where AG1 comes in for me. And I'd like to thank AG1 now for sponsoring this video. AG1 is a foundational nutrient supplement that supports whole body health, including support for the brain, the gut, and immune system. I used to feel overwhelmed by the number of choices in the supplement aisle at the grocery store, but AG1 eliminates the guesswork by combining what you'd normally get from a combination of individual vitamins and supplements, making it easy to get the nutrients that my body needs with just one scoop daily in a glass of water. And AG1's formulation is based on the latest science and maintains the highest quality standards, making it NSF certified for sport. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash Jeff Peltier to get started on your order. AG1 is giving my audience a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 and K2 and five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Okay, so it's the morning of stage one. Uh, we're just walking up to the start line now. We've got our drop bags that they're gonna bring up to the finish line for us. Stage one of the race took us from Ribes de Fezer up the Nuria Valley as we climbed a total of 2,400 meters over 27 kilometers.
The stage ended at Hotel Nuria, right in the center of the natural park. Audrey and I finished in just under five hours in sixth place in the mixed division and 14th overall. From there, we took the train back to Ribes de Fraser, where we'd have dinner along with the daily briefing and awards and would spend another night. The next morning, we took the train back up to Hotel Nuria to pick up where we'd left off for stage two. We topped out at close to 3,000 meters, which would also be our high point for the week. From there, it was mostly all downhill to the finish. We were both feeling a little tired after the day before, but finished strong after five and a half hours in eighth place mixed team and 15th overall. So after we finished, we hung out at the finish line area for a bit. We had some food, we each had a massage, um, we rehydrated. So then we came back to our hotel, got checked in, uh, took a shower, went through our recovery routine, and now we're just relaxing a bit before dinner. Stage three would be the longest yet at 39 kilometers with 2,200 meters of climbing but it would also be by far the most scenic as we passed through Andorra, our seventh European country of the summer. finished in 7 hours and 12 minutes in 8th place in the mixed category and 15th team overall. Stage 4 was short but quite steep with 1800 meters of climbing over just 20 kilometers. finished 7th placed mix and 15th overall in under 4 hours. And that left us with a bit of extra time in the evening to explore Andorra City, a 20 minute bus ride away. Stage 5 was a very long but incredibly scenic stage. We climbed through technical terrain and along through alpine lakes as we traveled from Andorra back to Spain, covering 40 kilometers with 2,800 meters of elevation gain in just over eight hours on feet. We finished this stage in sixth place in the mixed category and 12th place overall, a testament to our strength in the longer distances. Stage six was essentially one big climb of 1,800 meters, followed by an even bigger descent with alpine lakes and waterfalls along the way. We finished in sixth place mixed team again and 13th overall, and had now moved up to 15th place overall for the week with just one stage to go. The final stage was the most beautiful yet. A long day of challenging alpine terrain, boulder fields, scree, and more alpine lakes than I could count. We also passed through Val d'Eran, which gave us a taste of just how difficult the UTMB Val d'Eran 100 miler must be. We finished the final stage in 8th place, mixed, and 15th overall, which would be our final standings for the week.
with a cumulative time of 41 hours and 18 minutes. For the race, I ran in a pair of Solomon S-Lab Ultra 3s, which I've been wearing a lot this season, while Audrey alternated between the Ultra 3s and the Solomon Ultra Glide 2. And we both fueled mainly using products from NAC, along with a bit of food from the aid stations, which included NAC's Ultra Energy Drink Mix, Waffles Bars, and their new purees, which are delicious and high in electrolytes. And you can use my discount code at NAC.com for 15% off to try them for yourself. And thank you so much to both Solomon and Knack for the support of this adventure, as well as Jordi and Thomas from Be Free, the organization behind the Pyrenees Stage Run, and all of the incredible volunteers for such a great event. Staying in a hotel each night and eating proper meals, buffet meals, as opposed to having to carry all of my own food and sleep in a tent, was definitely something new for me in stage racing. But it's something that I could get used to. It really felt more like a running vacation than a race. And running as a team was also a new dynamic for me, which was a lot of fun, and it's something that I hope that Audrey and I get a chance to do again in the near future. And Be Free puts on a few staged events, including the three-day Costa Brava, so definitely check out their website in case you're interested in giving something like this a try. It's the perfect introduction to stage racing, and their events are not only really well organized, but they're also really good value as well. After the race, we took the shuttle back to Barcelona, where we'd spend the next couple of days relaxing on the beach in nearby Castel de Fel before catching our flight home. Now, since getting home from Spain, I've been right back into my training because the Moab 240 is less than a month away. But I'll tell you more about my preparation, including the heat training that I've been doing in the sauna and the sweat test that I just did in the next episode. So subscribe to my newsletter if you haven't already to be notified as soon as that's released. And of course, like always, there will be a full-length documentary coming about our entire experience at the Pyrenees stage run, including a ton of incredible drone footage that the media team filmed at the race. But this won't be ready until the new year at the earliest because I've gotten a little bit backed up on the editing work, as I'm sure you can appreciate. We'll be leaving for Utah in less than a week now, where I'll have about two weeks to finish my training before the race, before the Moab 240. Basically everything this season has been in lead up to this. So I'm really excited to see how it all comes together for me. So stay tuned to find out.